So um, let's talk a little bit about uh, radioactivity. Radioactivity is basically spontaneous nuclear reactions that occur in unstable elements. And most of these are, are the big, giant, heavy ones. And so Henri, uh, Antoine Henri Becquerel was the one who discovered this. And the way he discovered it was that he, he uh, had these photographic plates, which are just sheets of glass. And those things were all wrapped up in something probably like a foil wrapping of some kind to keep the light out of them. And he laid some uranium salts on top of it, left it in a drawer for a while. And then when he developed the plates, the plates had this ghostly image of the, of the uranium salts on top of it. And he's like, hmm, something went through that foil and exposed this film, probably gamma rays or something like that, exposed the film. Uh, and it wasn't light that did it because he knew that he kept them very carefully in the dark and protected like that, right? Um, uh, and the radiation that he discovered, ionized air, that just means it was able to knock electrons off of the air or onto air particles, right? Um, he discovered that, it's, that the, the stuff he was observing could be deflected by a magnetic field, right? X-rays are just, by the way, photons. They have no charge. So, so uh, they had discovered X-rays at the time, right? But these things were not X-rays because X-rays are undeflected by a magnetic field. These things could be deflected, right? He had discovered radioactive decay. Right? And then this is the nomenclature we talk about. The parent nucleus is the thing that ha is, is what it is before it decays. Uh, then we talk about the daughter and the radiation. Right? Okay? And then, you know, presumably this can have some energy. It could be moving uh, as a result of the energy loss. Okay? Now, this is, these are the types of radiation or radioactivity, um, the types of decay and the types of radiation that we have. Right? There's alpha decay, beta minus, beta plus, and gamma that we're going to look at. Okay, this is what they are. An alpha particle is actually a huge thing. By far, it's the, it's the giantest of all these things, right? It's two protons, two neutrons. It's basically a helium nucleus. And when we do the calculations for it, we're actually we actually look up a neutral helium atom. It can go about four centimeters through air, so so you know stand more than four centimeters away from an alpha source, and and uh, you're safe. But if you ingest an alpha source, then of course it's uh, bombarding your tissue at close range. So that's the real danger. Um, and I'll bring in some radioactive rocks, and and uh, the only real danger there is that you would like get that stuff on your fingers and then ingest it, right? So you want to you know yeah keep clean, right? Um, a beta beta decay is just an electron. Okay, but it's not an orbital electron. Don't confuse beta decay with like the atom becomes ionized. This is amazingly enough an electron that's created from pure energy by the nucleus. Imagine that, right? The nucleus just does some rearrangement and it creates out of pure energy an electron. Okay, that's crazy. You can stop uh, beta decay with uh, aluminum foil or, or three meters of air will eventually, it won't make it through that much. Okay. Um, beta plus decay is that the nucleus creates not a, uh, an electron, but an antimatter electron. This is antimatter. And indeed, it does exist, right? It's not even, it's, that's the kind of physics we're doing, right? It's an antimatter electron. So it's exactly the same as an electron, only it is positively charged. Okay, it's called a positron, right? And we don't actually detect positrons, by the way. Positrons just, you know, eventually hit an electron and annihilate. I mean, really, they do. And they create this pair of photons that go off in opposite directions. And then the final one is a gamma decay. Okay, A gamma decay is just a high-energy photon. What happens is, is that some nucleon in the nucleus, you know how in the Bohr atom there were these, these orbits, right? And when electrons went from one orbit to another, it emitted a photon, right? In the nucleus, there are energy levels. And um, usually after a beta decay or an alpha decay, the nucleus is left in a high energy state and it um, it makes a transition to a low energy state. Um, and when it does that, it gives off this, this gamma ray. So these are these disastrously energetic uh, photons. Um, these things are used to sterilize beef, right? A gamma source will kill all life. So they just expose beef to gamma rays. And, and does it, is that beef safe? Probably. Uh, okay, and then this is the effect that, that the decays have on the parent. Since a uh, uh, helium nucleus is two protons, two neutrons, you've lost the atomic mass number goes down by four, and the proton number goes down by two because it's two protons, right? And then two plus two is four of those, right? 
um, beta minus decay, the mass number doesn't change because then remember an electron is incredibly small. So this electron's not made, it's not like a, a nucleon turns into the electron, right? It's just that, it, that there's enough energy released to create an electron from pure energy, right? So there's no change in mass number, but if you create a negative charge, you have to create a positive charge. So it's as if a neutron crosses the aisle and becomes a proton. Okay, that's the notion. But that's not really what's happening. Okay, um, and then beta plus decay. A beta plus decay, again, there's no change in the mass number. Electrons are not as nearly as big. They're 2,000 times smaller than a nucleon, right? So the, the mass number stays the same. But if you create a positive charge, then you're going to create uh, one negative charge or lose a positive charge in the nucleus, right? So we lose a proton, crosses the ion, becomes a neutron, and this thing carries away the positive charge, right? And then finally, um, gamma decay, all it does is it basically, um, there's no change in, in, in uh, the atomic mass number, and since photons have no charge, they're just photons, right? Um, there's no change in the, the charge, right? But the parent loses an, an amount of mass equal to the energy of that photon, right? So this is actually a fairly simple, um, a simple decay. Now let's do some examples of this. Okay, I'm going to turn the page here. You probably want to write that down. Okay. Um, oh, here's a picture. This is kind of cool, right? Uh, this shows a radioactive sample here. Uh, gamma rays, that's a gamma, right? They go straight because there's no charge. And then you can, you know, you can, this guy's positively charged, right? So it's going to go uh, uh, this way, right? You can do the right-hand rule. Uh, this is a beta minus decay, and of course a, a beta plus would go this way if it there was a vacuum, right? And there wasn't something to make it annihilate, okay? So you can tell by magnetic fields which way, which charge the particles have. At CERN, when they're looking at particles, they have these big magnetic fields to, uh, so they, they've got that information. Okay, okay, so here's an example, right? Uh, we've got lead, right, and it's uh, 210 and 82, right, and it's going to turn into uh, a 4,2 alpha particle, right? Uh, whoops, plus something, right, that's like question mark, question mark, right? Okay, and this, you know, this is how hard nuclear reactions are. Well, this thing's got to be a 206, because 210 is 4 plus 206, right? And then uh, this has to be 80, right? And then 20680 is mercury. Okay. So that's as hard as balancing nuclear reactions is, right? Um, yeah. That's not too hard, right? Okay, let's look at the, let's look at a beta decay. Okay, so this one's a little bit tougher. Uh, somehow we created a negative charge, right? Okay, this thing here is going to have the same number, right? It's going to still be a 40 because a uh, little electron is not going to change the mass number. But I think what we want to do is create a 20, right? Which makes it calcium, right? Okay, and now we're all good. We created, this is plus 1, right? This is minus 1. The charge is balanced here, right? Okay, so uh, potassium 40 decays into uh, calcium 40 with, uh, by beta decay. That's kind of cool, right? So that's what you do is you balance the charge there. Okay. And then let's look at a, let's look at a beta plus. Okay, so here's a beta plus oxygen 15 beta plus decays, right? Well, that's plus one, so whatever happens to this has to be we lose a, a charge, right? Okay, so instead of uh, uh, being element eight, it's going to become element seven, right? Again, the mass number doesn't change, right? So 15,8 oxygen is going to turn into 15 something. Well, it's going to be seven, right? We've got to lose this. This represents the amount of positive charge, right? Right, and so this uh, hydrogen plus beta plus. So this is a plus one in the charge and this is minus one in the charge. And again, that's, we're good, right? Okay. Yippee skippy. You might want to look at the other examples.